Humanity has arrived at an historical crossroads. For millennia, nature was considered inviolable and the Earth's resources inexhaustible. Today, we are forced to recognize that our planet's capacity is limited and that nature's balance is vulnerable. Humans interfere with nature's regulative processes, causing uncontrolled long-term changes in our global environment and the climate in particular. An understanding of the climate system and the implications of man's influence is therefore a major challenge for science today. The climate system is a huge heat engine which is driven by the radiation from the sun. The differences in the incident solar radiation in the equatorial and polar regions between day and night and summer and winter generate temperature gradients which drive the atmospheric circulation. The atmospheric winds in turn drive the ocean currents. The circulation systems of the atmosphere and ocean reduce the temperature contrasts by transporting heat from warmer to cooler regions. Interactions between the oceans, the atmosphere, the ice sheets and plants govern the inner dynamics of the climate system on a broad range of timescales, from hours to millennia. How will the climate system react in the future to increasing emissions of greenhouse gases, nitrogen oxides and other substances? How will global warming, higher sea levels and the change in the composition of the atmosphere affect living conditions on Earth? We cannot experiment with the Earth. To assess the impact of human activities on climate, our only option is to use computer models which simulate the climate system. To develop a computer model of a climate subsystem, the atmosphere for example, we start with a set of complex numerical formula describing the laws of nature governing the state and evolution of the subsystem. To obtain a global picture of the evolution of the atmosphere, we need to solve these equations simultaneously for many locations distributed over the entire atmosphere. The finer the resolution of this computational grid, the more realistic the result. Through the use of modern supercomputers, it has been possible in recent years to develop realistic numerical models for all important subsystems of the climate system and to describe the principal interactions between these subsystems. Today's models simulate climate phenomena with impressive fidelity. For example, the weather pattern over the northern Atlantic and Europe can be simulated realistically with a model of the global atmosphere, which computes quantities like temperature, pressure and cloudiness 
simultaneously at 1 million grid points, more than 100 times for each simulated day. Similar so-called general circulation models are used to simulate the ocean's temperature, salinity and density distribution together with its complex current systems. The evolving red lines indicate warm currents, the blue lines cold currents. The simulation also reveals the structures of the current systems of the deep oceans. The variation in the thickness and density of the polar sea ice fields shown here in its annual cycle, is another important feature simulated by the climate models. Biological processes also influence our climate. The hierarchy of climate subsystem models therefore includes models to simulate the interaction between the biosphere and the atmosphere-ocean system. Here we see the annual variation of the rate at which carbon is taken up or released by the vegetation and marine organisms, an important link in the global carbon cycle. The oceans can, potentially, store large amounts of the carbon dioxide emitted into the atmosphere. However, the process of dissolving CO2 at the ocean surface and transporting it into deeper regions takes several hundred years. This simulation shows the increase of dissolved carbon dioxide in the Atlantic Ocean from 150 years before the present until the year 2099. In addition to the carbon cycle, a complete climate model must include further chemical processes. The ozone concentrations in the stratosphere, at a height of about 25 kilometers, was computed with an atmospheric general circulation model, including atmospheric chemistry, here shown for a three-month period. Low ozone concentrations are displayed in blue. In addition to global climate models, high resolution regional models are used to study specific processes important for climate. For example, volcano eruptions, which produce large quantities of aerosols. The computed trajectories of ejected particles are shown as yellow lines. models, we are able to study today both the impact of man's activities on climate and the nature of natural climate variability. For example, we can predict climate variations such as El Nino 
a phenomenon which occurs at irregular intervals of several years. Fisheries off the west coast of South America collapse. Australia suffers droughts. California experiences floods. And other climate anomalies occur worldwide. El Nino always begins with an anomalous warming of the surface waters. At the same time, the prevailing easterly wind direction over the Western Pacific is weakened or reversed. Here we see the anomalous temperature and wind stress as experienced during the El Nino of 1982-83. The observed temperature in the upper 250 meters of the equatorial Pacific for the same period. It can clearly be seen that the warm surface water is pushed eastward by the reversed winds during the El Nino of 1982-83. With the Hamburg Ocean Atmosphere models, these phenomena can be reliably simulated the oscillation of the water temperature of the equatorial Pacific are very well reproduced by the model. Using such models, the evolution of an El Nino can be predicted over one year into the future. The lower part of the screen shows the observed temperature anomalies during the El Nino years 1986-87. The upper part the prediction for the same period. In 1992, estimations of the global warming due to increasing greenhouse gas emissions were presented using, for the first time, a realistic coupled ocean atmosphere model. The simulation predicted a strong heating of the atmosphere with significant climate changes if the CO2 emissions continue to increase as they do today, as shown in the left globe. But the model showed also that the worst can still be prevented if we act now to reduce emissions, as shown in the right globe. These results were presented at the time of the World Climate Conference in Rio de Janeiro. In the meantime, even more realistic simulations have been carried out, including not only the greenhouse gases, but also the effect of aerosols, existing largely of small sulphate droplets formed in the atmosphere through the emission of sulphur dioxide. For the first part of the simulation, the model is forced by the past concentrations of greenhouse gases and sulphate aerosols reconstructed from measurements, historical records, and an aerosol model. Subsequently, estimations of future emissions from the International Panel of Climate Change are used. The simulation starts in 1880, when global emissions were still very low. The year of the simulation is shown in the top right-hand corner. Watch the natural fluctuation of the temperature pattern. We see now the temperature change today with respect to the last century. The simulated pattern shows a global warming, red and yellow regions, but also a slight cooling over the highly industrialized countries due to the increased reflection of solar radiation by the aerosol particles, which are now being superimposed as a grey cloud. Let's see now the predicted temperature change for the five decades to come assuming an unabated increase in emissions. 
The prediction shows, despite the counteracting impact of aerosols, a pronounced heating of the global atmosphere. Slight cooling is still found only in a small region over the industrial belt, especially over eastern China, where a rapidly expanding industry has been assumed without significant abatement of sulfur dioxide emissions, resulting in heavily polluted air. The increase of the global mean surface temperature as observed during the last century. The red curve shows the simulation and prediction of the temperature raise. The simulation concurs well with the observations and predicts a rapid heating during the next 50 years. Using modern fingerprint detection methods, Hamburg scientists recently estimated that the predicted global warming can already be seen in today's temperature records with a probability of 95%. This is again the temperature change pattern predicted by our model simulations, assuming unabated greenhouse gas emissions. To obtain an optimized fingerprint of the greenhouse signal, we slightly modify this pattern. We use statistical methods to suppress pattern features associated with high natural climate variability, at the same time enhancing features associated with low variability. In this manner, we maximize the signal-to-noise ratio, the chance of detecting the signal in the presence of variability noise. The resulting fingerprint is applied to the observed temperature data of the last hundred years in the form of a mask or filter in order to detect the greenhouse signal. The gauge on the right is a measure of the statistical probability that the warming associated with the fingerprint pattern cannot be explained by the natural climate variability alone, but is man-made. In 1993, this probability passes the 95% mark. We have attempted to visualize here in simple terms the results of rather complex statistical computations. Stated briefly, greenhouse warming is not only a threat for the future, but very probably a fact of today. We are 95% sure that we have already begun to heat our planet.